What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Veyron and Zonda, the servants of Ultima, had appeared out of nowhere. Zonda muttered, Although it would be better for us if you didn't survive. But the noise of the combat was too loud for Gabble to hear. That was incredibly fortunate. Veyron joined Soka while assuming the appearance of a butler. His cane was raised toward Marco. My meek self will handle this individual, so Lady Soka, if you might help, do so. The rest of you will look after the injured, and Zonda here will aid in the healing process. Understood. Then let's go. As soon as Veyron heard Soka's response, he took action. He was a demon peer of the Marquis rank. Despite having a lower energy ratio than Marco, Veyron was more proficient. Even though he was unable to win, he was able to annoy Marco. How can you be so annoying? Before I can kill you all, you keep popping up one after another. Of course. It is our responsibility to discover the enemy's power. Yeah. I am aware of how upsetting it may be when someone imitates your strengths. I'll eliminate you right away, and that other dangerous- An opening! Marco turned his violent intent on Gabble while retaliating against Veyron. Soka moved without missing a beat. The yelling was purposeful. She was attempting to get Marco's attention so that he would hesitate. It would be even better if she could hit him with her kanai. Veyron's blade would still cut Marco even if it didn't work out. She made that assessment. Marco anticipated it. He made the best decision as a result. He decided against dodging Soka's kanai, in other words, it was the proper course of action. He would have been significantly more seriously hurt by Veyron if he had responded to Soka. Marco proceeded to flick Veyron's cane aside while oblivious to Soka. He regretted considering a pointless idea throughout the fight. I guess I'll have to finish them off first. They're such a pain in the ass. Gabble was without a doubt the most dangerous. That's why Marco wanted to get rid of him as soon as possible, but he became impatient and ended up hurting himself. Although it was a minor injury, he couldn't forgive himself for harming himself in Kondu's form. I'll take care of you first. Well now, are you certain you can pull it off? Sir Veyron, maybe he's just a sore loser. Ah, uh, I suppose so. So let's not rush things and finish the task. In spite of the odds being against them, Veyron and Soka decided to fight Marco. Zonda was also active during this time. This is a horrible technique, I must say. Demonic aura? No, it's a fighting aura because he's a human. He left enough energy in the adversary's body to keep it emitting a wavelength that agitated the magicules. This technique is terrifying. In this situation, it will also work on spiritual lifeforms such as ourselves. That's how he figured out what had happened to Gabble. His evaluation was accurate. It was a form of energy discharge, similar to Damrata's spiral permeation break, where a concentrated fighting aura annihilated the adversary from within. The battle will, the core of the Oboro Shinmei Ryu, was based on this, which is why it was referred to be a sword that vanquished evil. Because of this, Magicule healing potions were unable to treat these wounds. However, Zonda could. He expertly controlled the Magicules to control the chaotic energy. In order to restore Gabble's body to its regular energy flow, he dispelled the fighting aura that Marco had injected. And Gabble didn't just wait for his condition to improve. He wanted a more potent curative force. Gabble was about to gain a new power because of that desire. However, Marco relaxed his stance because the situation was still unstable. Oh no, the time is up. I've been told to go back, so I think that puts an end to this fight. Before anyone could react, Marco vanished from the scene as soon as he finished speaking. Gabble and the others thus barely survived. Against footmen, Vaughn was struggling. The word, struggling, was an understatement. Vaughn was likewise a sage-class opponent who was confident in his abilities. However, footmen could easily defeat Vaughn due to his magicule count. Vaughn's spear and armor were of legendary quality, which added to his strength. Nonetheless, he appeared to be unable to reach him. He could only continue to fight because footmen lacked common sense. Phobio's assistance was also quite helpful. I, Phobio the Black Leopard Fawn, will assist you. Vaughn was initially wary of the man who had barged in and was saying that, but he quickly realized who the man was. The Black Leopard Fang is a member of Demon Lord Carrion's Beastketeers. Yes, Carrion has now given up his territory to Demon Lord Milam, an ally of His Majesty Rimuru. Vaughn accepted the assistance, deciding that he was not an adversary. Thank you. I was just considering how challenging it would be for me to handle this on my own. Indeed. In all honesty, I doubt that I could do it by myself either. 
Fobio calmly analyzed his prior behavior and evaluated his own capabilities. Even in his serious, fully, bestialized, state, he understood instinctively that he could not vanquish Footman. Because of this, Fobio decided to fight alongside Vaughn while putting his pride aside. Although Footman was powerful, his attacks lacked variety because he had lost his sense of logic. Despite their wounds, Vaughn and Fobio were still able to stand. Although they could not count on success, they had no concept of retreating. Because their fellow soldiers were engaged in a life-or-death battle right beside them. Henrietta, the leader of the Dwargon Armed Nation's Night Assassins, and Gobua, who had entered the conflict, responded to the other clown, Tyr. They were attempting to apprehend the lone Tyr with their little squad of elites. Tyr, though, seemed to be behaving oddly. I'm very sorry, alright? Although it's not my intention, I must follow the order. I promise to try my best to avoid killing you. Therefore if you can, please take action to thwart my plans. She was ferociously battling while speaking in that manner. Tyr had her own free will, even if Kigali had ordered her to fight. She knew Kigali was being manipulated, but she was unable to defy orders. She was therefore not fighting of her own free will and had no desire to do so. Tyr was making every effort to avoid getting into a severe fight because of this. She had ordered her adversaries, Henrietta and the others, to stop her even though she had joined the combat in order to obey Kigali's orders. Henrietta and the others were conducting a capture operation in response to Tyr's request. However, there had been no progress due to the vast strength disparity between the two sides. That man over there, I apologize as well, alright? I exploited you in the past, but I won't defraud you this time. When Tyr addressed him, Phobio was furious. To save them from dying, Footman's sense of reason was taken away, as Phobio and Vaughn both noted. It hadn't occurred to him when they first met, but the simple fact that Carrion, whom Phobio respects, was as strong as Footman made him think that they would lose to him in a fair fight. And for the time being, Phobio was appreciative to Tyr for that. However, Shut up. Don't make me think about my troubled past. I'm glad you made that man go on a blind rampage, even if you didn't say it. That's right, since you guys are weak, you would already be dead if Footman was serious. Tyr retaliated against Phobio with such an innocent tone. She said it without any malice, and she meant every word. Phobio was furious about it because of this, but right now, all he could do was whine. What a brat. Stop talking already. Instead, you should strive harder to restrict yourself. Phobio and Vaughn were at a loss for words at the moment and could only sigh. The challenging situation persisted. Gobua, on the other hand, desired to wrap things up here and assist the other combatants because she believed this to be the easiest foe. The circumstance, however, was not simple. Although Tyr was not hostile, she was unable to defy orders. Gobua was correct in believing that Tyr would be simple to capture. Tyr and Footman were simply too powerful, which is why the plan did not succeed. Footman could effortlessly rip through an iron net. It was challenging to knock him out, and insincere attacks would fail. Vaughn and Phobio, two powerful guys, were necessary to restrain him in some way. As for Tyr, not even Henrietta, who was confident in her speed, could catch up to her, and Gobua could not even touch her. A cast net had also been set up for her, although it was doubtful they would be able to catch her alive. Better performance would have come from Soka and the others, but they appeared to be preoccupied with fighting Marco. As a result, the war situation became worse. Gobua was able to understand the battle scenario thanks to information from Moss. It appeared that Veyron and Zonda had rushed to Gabble's aid. Although the situation had once again reached a standstill, it appeared to have grown significantly more dangerous. The worst of all was Kandu. Hakuro lost, and King Gazel was also vanquished. Agera and Esprit appeared to be on their way, but it was uncertain they could even stall against Kandu. If things get really bad, I'll come out. Moss said. On behalf of Benamaru, it was his responsibility to evaluate the situation. On the basis of Moss's knowledge, Gobua was to plan the operation. Gobua was still giving clear directions while dealing with Tyr. It was only Moss's assistance that made this feasible. The front line would instantly fall apart if Moss entered combat. Wait for that, please. Please do so in the worst case, but will you be able to handle it in the first place? I promise to try my best. Gobua felt hopeless, pondering whether or not even Moss could win. He was a self-assured man who, with the exception of Testarossa, treated everyone with arrogance. Moss's statement about trying his best was so ambiguous. In other terms, it demonstrated how deadly Kandu could be as a foe. It would be challenging to stop Kandu. Gabble wasn't yet back in the fight. Gobua and the others still had a long way to go before they could capture Tyr and Footman, it would be hard to stop Kigali's ritual at this rate. 
Gadra existed, but he was now embroiled in a verbal conflict with Velgrind. Velgrind's involvement would guarantee defeat. The worst is this. I realize now just how much Sir Ramuru and Sir Beni Maru have been relied upon by us. Even though Gobua was in the midst of sorrowful introspection, it was already too late. They should never give up because of this. No, not yet. Considering that Lady Velgrind has remained still, the demons must be exerting every effort. They are persevering, despite the obvious strength differences. It would not be acceptable for us to be the first to give up. Gobua remembered the three proud demon girls. They didn't want to lose, and although being new, they were still among the twelve Chaos Guardian Lords, which was the highest rank. They were unfathomably powerful to Gobua and the others, but as they faced Velgrind, the sensation of hopelessness grew more intense. The fact that the war was still ongoing was astonishing. Gobua believed that she could not lose. She regained her spirit and stepped up her attempts to continue capturing Tyr. A man was in front of Kandu. It was Agera, a samurai dressed casually in a kimono. Agera, go ahead, I'll avoid interfering with you. Esprit then started healing Gazel and Hakuro. In shock, Agera shook his head. That's how Esprit has always been. She always, conveniently, took the finest piece. Simply told, Esprit fled the combat after realizing she was unable to defeat Kandu this time. Esprit was a demoness that could swim with the tide. As carefree as always, Agera raised his sword to Kandu's face. With a single sword, he had been unbeatable for 300 years. As he stood before Kandu, who had vanquished legendary swordsmen like Hakuro and Gazel, he felt his blood begin to boil. Kandu, was it? You are a master of the sword. I also live by the sword. I would adore sparring with you with a sword. Agera was aware that he needed limitations in order to defeat Kandu. Hakuro had only been able to fight back because Kandu had agreed to use a sword. Otherwise, they would have been knocked to the ground too rapidly to sustain even a single wound, even if Gazel and Hakuro had challenged him simultaneously. He made the suggestion for that reason. Even though the negotiations were precarious, Agera felt certain Kandu would agree. This was because Kandu's swordplay felt somewhat familiar to him. Sir Agera, is it accurate to say that you are a swordsman as well, as I suspected? Kandu was about to respond when Hakuro interjected with a query. What exactly do you mean by suspected? Oh, no, actually, I thought Sir Agera resembled a former acquaintance of mine. In response to Agera's puzzled gaze, Hakuro stammered. In reality, Agera and Hakuro's grandfather shared an almost identical appearance. They shared similar looks, as well as similar stature, mannerisms, and even faultless behavior. Is that so? But, sadly, I'm afraid I'm not the same person. Since I was born more than three centuries ago, I don't recall ever meeting you. I'm not sure if I'm a skilled swordsman, but I'm willing to use this sword to battle until the end of time. Agera gave a gentle smile in response. The sword was everything to him. I see. Please disregard my insignificant comment, though. Hey, anime fans. Episode 8 of Solo Leveling is now live on Anime Fan Narrations. Don't miss out on the latest action as Jinwoo faces new challenges. Find the link in the description box. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kahai supporters. Jerry Sladek, Efrain Hernandez, Luca Gaming WTF, Jordan Mercia, Jay Magsino, Recruil17, Bismarck Munoz, Orion Booker, Sagar Kotecha, Kamal Luke. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.